Welcome back to another episode of KCKS Question. Tonight, we're at the guy's place. We're getting a pretty colorful guy this week. Uh, the mustache man himself, the first rookie to appear on the show, Mr. Mackenzie Dwyer, a.k.a. Dwyzy. How's it going, guys? Welcome, everyone, to another episode of KCKS Question. Uh, tonight, I'm very uh, pleased to introduce the first rookie to appear on uh, this web series, a very colorful guy, uh, the mustache man himself, Mackenzie Dwyer, a.k.a. Dwyzy. Dwyzy, thanks for coming. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to know where you're from Winnipeg, right? Yes, what sir. What part of Winnipeg are you from? Uh, the north part of Winnipeg, so exact opposite side of Lotsey. Yeah. So you guys talked about him being from 10 minutes south. I'm, yeah. I'm basically right on the north border, so as far as what, you can get. What uh, What you do as a kid? Uh, like growing up? Yeah. What was your activity you like to do? School? Like, other than school? Yeah, other than school. <laughs> uh, in the summers? Or summers, I actually didn't really play hockey that much. I was more of a snowboard in the summer, or in the winter, sorry. And then in the, in the summer, my brother's built a full skateboard park in our backyard, so I skateboarded a lot, and then uh, I got into wakeboarding as I got older as well. So, so a lot more of the board extreme sports. sports like yeah, yeah, I almost with, uh, didn't play any sports, really. What made you start playing hockey? Well, well, my two older brothers played, but they both kind of veered off as they got to 12, 13, and I just kind of stuck with it, I guess, because I was a little decent at it, right? Yeah, you picked it up. Yeah. You picked the old skates. and Yeah, I got all the hand-me-downs. Yeah. All, all of them. All yeah. the old equipment. No new equipment for this guy, no. <laughs> no. You had to grind your way up. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so fast forward a little bit, a couple of years, you... Um, you went and played the MJHL. That's a junior junior league in uh, in Canada. Mm-hmm. And then you you had a little stint in the WHL. Yeah, a cup how, of coffee. How that happened? Uh, well, I got drafted to the Saskatoon Blades when I was whatever fifteen, as it goes, and then uh, that didn't work out. So I got uh, shipped over to Everett Silvertips, and uh, one of my old coaches that I played. Uh, Bantam hockey with was actually the scout for them, so he kind of got me in there, and the and the GM is actually from Manitoba as well, so he kind of likes bringing in a lot of Manitoba guys all the way over there, so it's kind of a good place for me to get over there. And then as soon as I got over there, I met Austin Lots as well, and he kind of took me under his wing as being another Manitoba guy and kind of showed me the ropes and got me there for two years. So I stuck there for two years and had a small cup of coffee. Yeah, don't want to put Austin Lots in the shadow. We you play with a pretty uh, pretty big name. In that Carter Hart, uh, yeah, ever heard of him? Number one goalie for the Philadelphia Flyers right yeah. now. Did you guys, you guys build a good relationship? Or? Yeah, actually, yeah, I had a pretty good relationship. He was, uh, I think, he's a year younger than me, so he was kind of a, a younger guy. Just uh, kind of all the younger guys hang out together, so we hung out quite a bit. And actually, uh, he's pretty into guitar now, and they were uh, talking about that on Spit and Chicklets. But how he was playing at the uh, in the bubble. Did he mention your name? No, no. God, no. <laughs> I'm mentioning his though. Yeah. No, he was. They were talking about him how he was playing the guitar in front of all the boys, and actually we went and bought our first guitars together in Everett. So nice. that's kind of a cool little story. Yeah. Did you build a just a, a strong relationship with him as you did with Austin Loss, or Austin was like? I think it's just a kind of the whole defense goalie combination, right? I kind of always have a pretty strong relationships mm-hmm. with my goalies just because you're kind of out there battling for them and you gotta you gotta stick up for them if anybody ever runs them over or whatnot but you're kind of out there to do the same thing as keep the puck out of the net right? block so, a couple of shots yeah you do what you gotta do yeah. yeah well i'm not scoring any goals so i gotta do something to <laughs> exactly. stay out there yeah and then after that you went back to the to the mjhl for the porridge terrier where you had quite uh quite a a couple of good years, right? Mm-hmm. You guys win. You guys won your your league, mm-hmm. and you went on to to host the RBC Cup, which is like the the big stage for the for the junior hockey in yeah, Canada. Exactly. Tell yeah. us how how that year went, and like you guys had a pretty good squad, right? Yeah, uh, both the times, I, both the years I played, there were pretty good. So the first was when I was seventeen. We uh, we were hosting uh, the RBC Cup, and we went over to. To Fort uh, McMurray for the Western Canada Cup after winning our league and uh, put on a good showing there and ended up making it to our to the RBC even without having to be hosting it. We actually played a uh, guy on our team, Jared Hildeman's team over there, and we kind of kicked <laughs> out of them every now and then, so it was good. 
But uh, no, we uh, we ended up hosting and and uh, winning the final game five to two at, in our home barn, which was pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, they had our second rink, our little practice rink, built into a whole beer gardens with a stage where they had concerts. No way. So as soon as we were done, we just took our skates off, left our full equipment on, Went and our party. whole team was in the beer gardens, like with the trophy, like up no on way. stage singing songs. Yeah, and our whole crowd, like all the fans were there, like That's three, four thousand people. Yeah, it was sick. I bet that must be like one of your top memories from home. Oh yeah, right? it was super cool. All the boys were up on stage, yeah. holding arms, singing songs. Yeah, winning something is always, uh, always yeah. sounds special. Yeah, it brings the guys tighter together. Those guys are our brothers for life now. You know, those, those type of memories are. Are held tight forever. Any anybody texts each other, calls each other. We're all still real close, so it's mm -hmm. good. And then after that, you uh, decided to get a little bit more serious. You went to play U Sports University for uh, University of Manitoba. Yes, that's sir. correct. Yeah. What did you study there? Uh, economics. I'm wow. Studying, I'm still studying economics Numbers guy. right now. Yeah, <laughs> math guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Who would have thought, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so only there for one year. Uh, I only played for the team for one year, one yeah. Year, okay. Yeah, but I've been in school there for three years. I'm still finishing my degree right now as I'm here. And then last year you went and played senior hockey just to just to <coughs> plan and yeah, it kind of worked out that uh, that uh, my career didn't really work out in, at U of M. So I I decided to coach high school last year, and uh, kind of just a couple of my buddies were playing senior out in the out in the country, and they asked if I wanted to play. So I decided might as well play a few games. Lace up the skates, have some beers with the boys. It was, a, it was a good time. It was actually pretty decent league. There was some ex AHL yeah. guys in the league and stuff, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was pretty good. Stayed uh, stayed in the loop of things and uh, helped me come here for sure. Yeah, like talking yeah. of coming here, you decide to. What made you come to Birmingham? What was the pivotal point there? Um, couple re like couple reasons. I mean, I've always heard good things about Birmingham. Lots of guys from Winnipeg are from there. I mean, Simmers from there, right? So. Definitely heard a lot of good things, but it, it all kind of worked out just with COVID happening and, and the quarantine in Winnipeg. Our, our senior team wasn't playing. I wasn't coaching anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, school was completely online. So I, all my commitments in Winnipeg were kind of kind of null and void, and I could I can continue going to school while I was here. So it kind of worked out that, hell, if there's any year to go or to try it out, to try and make pro, to try and do it, this was the year, and if I wasn't going to, I would never do it. So you know, she had a passion for the sport. And you just wanted to keep playing. Exactly. I think honestly, senior, I think helped me find the love for hockey a little bit again. Just having fun. Back to the basics. Having <clears throat> fun. You know, enjoying the boys, not always at each other's throat, trying yeah. to win. And I think that's what I love of, love it about here too. Is all the boys are kind of in the same boat, just trying to win games and and there for each other. You know. What do you think was is the biggest adjustment from going to? Not like a fun league, but senior hockey to pro, yeah. to pro, where it's like you you got to work for a job, and that's uh, that's the biggest thing. Is yeah. there's actually pressure on for a job, right? Yeah. I think definitely a little bit of pressure that you have to you have to compete every night, you have to be at your best every night. It's definitely the the biggest change from coming from senior. Now that you've put uh, everyone in a pretzel with your with your hockey career so far, yeah, seriously, yeah. bounced around a couple of places. Senior uh, right here, yeah. What's the First year in Birmingham. Yeah. What's the the hardest thing you think, or the, your least favorite thing about being a rookie? Besides me, uh, I was just going to say. Besides me being on your case all the time. Yeah, having you up my uh, on my butt every day, <laughs> <laughs> ripping me in practice every day. The, the worst thing, the hardest thing. Ah, I mean, I'd say like cooking my own meals and stuff, but I've kind of always been a uh, cook my own meal type of guy. So, but uh, I'd say the roommates just like. It's not a hard thing, but it's like you're living with so many different guys and you're not just in your own house where your mom's doing your laundry yeah. or you got, you got all that get coming. You know, you're, you're on your own. You I like you're it. Grown up. Yeah, you got, you're a grown up now. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to come back to, to, you just said, cooking meals and stuff because mm -hmm. I heard you're a pretty good cook. But uh, no, I'm hard on you because you know I like you a lot. Yeah. Um, you obviously see a, a really stylish guy, you know, you like to, to look well, to dress well, whether it's um, with your suits when you show up to a game. On the golf course, always on point, 10 out of 10. So Thanks, what's the how important style for you? Like, what or uh, who influenced your style? I mean, the way you dress and what Yeah, you I think influences have been like anybody from like guys on your team that you look up to, or I mean, Instagram and YouTube is huge now, just like, uh, like popular guys, and you just build off of that. But no, I think style is huge. Like, I think kind of started from the whole like extreme sports when I was younger, like 
snowboarding and wakeboarding and skateboarding, they're all such like style driven sports where it's like, yeah, you could do the one trick and everyone could do it, but it's about how you do it and mm -hmm. the style that you're doing it in. And I think that's kind of where my style has came from is it's, it's how you express yourself. Like you can show up at the rink wearing it, whatever, but looking like a sock. Yeah. I mean, nobody's going to judge no. you. I mean, you can look like Lance, right? <laughs> yeah. show, showing up, but yeah, no, you, uh, you gotta, you gotta express yourself in some ways. And, uh, I think that's a good way to do it without having to be too loud or whatnot. It's uh, it's a good way to kind of distinguish yourself from other people. And, and like express yourself. A lot of people want to know, and I'm one of them, what's the deal with your car? Is that a way to express yourself? Like, what is going on with that? Are you a big fan of the movie, the fan of the, the Fast, Fast and the, the Furious? Furious, Tokyo Drift? Like, you I got think, the Audi, yeah. with the loud exhaust, only thing, he misses the knee on it, I mean, the car. Yeah. Like, what's going on with I that? Think, what's the thought process here? <laughs> I've always been into cars. It comes from my older brothers again. Okay. Like I think the first movie that I wasn't allowed to watch the full movie I remember is the one part in Fast and the Furious. I don't even know what it is now, but I, when I was six years old, I had to leave the room for one scene, whatever it was. I have no clue what was going on in it, but I mean, I'm sure I've watched that movie a hundred times, one of the first ones, and I've watched them all. My brothers have always been into cars and vehicles. My brother owns a fabricating company for, for trucks, lifted trucks and stuff, so I've just always been always been into cars and I've finally got my hands on one that I've always Driving wanted. that from uh, back home to Birmingham, which is about 30 hours, yeah. you gotta be wearing like hair moss or something. <laughs> that thing is so loud. See, when I first got it and put the exhaust on it and had all that, I didn't know it was gonna be that bad when you're going 80 miles oh per hour on the highway. <laughs> and it was kind of a bit of a, uh, a shock when I was on my way down here. I was yeah. like, had the podcast turned up as loud as it could oh, go and it to. still wasn't droning out the noise. So yeah. it was a little bit of a hassle, but I mean, it is what it is to have a, have a car like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I've done some research, right? Oh no. Talk to your roommates, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you guys are into uh, a core workout every night. You yeah. You a core workout. <laughs> yeah. 9 p.m. sharp core workout. How did that start? Uh, well... Started from uh, a guy who's no longer with us, who uh, who started us on it. He randomly one night he said, "You know, I used to do this core workout every night by myself." And then me and Pens, me and, and Pens, we go, "We'll do it, yeah, let's go!" Like, <laughs> yeah. So we started it. We trying to kill it. time. Yeah, we do it every night at around 9 p.m. And see, and you see when some results yet? <laughs> none for me. No, <laughs> I don't know about the other guys, but. <laughs> No, I think like it, no, no results shown, but I think it, uh, it definitely helps on the ice too with, with the core. Just, yeah. I mean, first night you do it, you're so sore, and second, third starts to wear off, and you start adding a little bit more. But now we just crush it out. It's not even bad. And is this like uh, working out? So is this something you do like during the off season? What's like work hobbies? What do you do during the off season? I work a lot. Yeah. Uh, this past season, I mean, I didn't know I was coming here until about two weeks before I came. Mm -hmm. Didn't know it was going to be a thing. Um, this summer I worked about uh, probably around 17 hours a day. I'd start with my dad's construction company, jackhammering all day, leave there around 4 or 5 p.m., go to the golf course and bartend until 2, 3 in the morning. Bartender. Yeah. That's where your uh, you're amazing uh, Bloody Mary. Caesars. Caesars. They're Bloody different. Caesar. True, true. Caesars. I should know. I should yeah. know. Yeah, you like them. You should yeah. know. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty yeah. good. Uh, I know you like to cook too. Mm-hmm. Your roommate told me you're a great cook. You made a, a sweet uh, apple crisp. Yeah. yeah. Can you uh, give us your recipe or that's some private? Uh, I mean, I think it was a Google, it was a quick Google search. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty basic Google search. No, I think uh, we had a couple of apples left over from the road trips and they were just sitting there and I said, you know what? No one's going to use them. Might as well make it a little dessert. I love them. How was it? 10 out of 10? It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the boys loved it. So Now uh, that you're in Birmingham, everything seems to to be going uh, pretty well for you, you've been playing pretty good. Just, can you describe Thanks. your first uh, professional goal for us? Well, uh, it's just in my dreams so far. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that dream question about must, it have every day. must have been for somebody else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no, I, also, geez. your roommate told me you traveled, uh, you traveled quite a bit. Uh, what are some of uh, the great places have been? Uh, a couple of my favorite places were like uh, Bali in Thailand. Went over there for a kind of spur of the moment trip with one of my buddies off of an, actually off of one of the teams he won a championship with. It's actually kind of a cool story. Uh, his, uh, let's, he, was, let's he, hear was, it. he was going with his girlfriend and uh, 
they happened to break up about a week before the trip and they had their whole trip planned out and he just texted in our team's group chat about a week before and said hey anybody want to come to bali with me you just said yeah and i said are you serious and he I'll said go. And we, we only knew each other for about a month this guy because he got traded right at the trade deadline we played playoffs together and then that was about it and i said are you, like are you, anybody's fine to come he's like yeah man if you want to come come booked a That's flight unreal. that night and went went a week later wow yeah to bali and we were there for about three weeks it was a it was an unreal time ask alone and just what he just went eh? yeah yeah. That's good. Just went. Still paying it off. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> took, 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 took the rest of the summer to pay it off working, but it was worth it for sure. And now that uh, COVID is, uh, is among us, you know, yeah. can do a whole lot of things. But mm -hmm. for the people who don't know, you and I are a golf partner. We golf oh, yeah. uh, together all the time. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we golf together. I mean, I, I, we golf I, I, against, I beat you up on against the, on each the other all the time. time. Yeah. And uh, you picked it up not too long ago, about yeah. a year ago, you were saying. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the most challenging thing about golf besides hitting the ball for you? Besides connecting with the ball? Besides connecting with the ball. <laughs> it's probably guys like you in my ear the whole time <laughs> saying he's going to duff the shot here and then trying to tune it out. Yeah, you need a lot of uh, focus and concentration oh, yeah. right, to play golf. Yeah. No, it's good though. I love it. Yeah, as you said, picked it up this summer like for the, for the first time in my life and uh, just fell in love with it instantly. So it's a good, good time getting out there in the sun with the boys and... Especially in the south. Yeah. You know. Oh, down here it's unbelievable. Yeah. Quick nice. shout out to uh, Timberline. Yeah. And then the Heatherwood Golf Course. Yeah. We played that uh, yesterday. Yeah. It was pretty. It was yeah. pretty fun day. Good time. And I've asked this one to uh, to my two pre previous guests. Mm -hmm. uh, if you had one tip or one advice to give you about my game, what would it be? Uh, not my yeah. golf game. Because you have no you're advice not. to give me about my golf Are game. Are you sure? sure. <laughs> you sure? I love my hockey game. Oh God. Uh, I think you gotta you gotta work smart, not hard, as Boom likes to say. Yeah, work too hard. <laughs> yeah, you work. Which is not a bad you thing. Work too hard. I I never really understood that, but you gotta work you gotta work smart, Case. All right, I'll try to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're gonna do the rapid fire questions. All right. This is one that I'm nervous about. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now uh, that I'm getting a haircut, <laughs> it's gonna look fire, by the way. It matches with the theme. We're gonna do some rapid fire question. So I ask you a question. All right. And you gotta answer it as quick as possible without you thinking about it. Sounds good. You understand the rules? I understand the rules. I don't get any time. You told the other two guys they get a second to think about it. No, not you. All right. Sounds good. All right. Desert island. You can only bring three things. What are they? Water, food, and uh, a boat. To get out of there? Yeah. <laughs> Pre-game meal. Don't lie to me. Sushi. <laughs> yeah, from where? Publix. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. I tried the place. The one place you told me. Uh, all right. How many tattoos do you have? Probably around 10. I don't know for sure. What's your favorite one? Uh, probably this one. Because it's for my dad. It was the first one I got. Yeah? Yeah. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It means a lot to me. That's nice. Yeah. If you could raid one woman's closet, who would it be? Raid one woman's closet? Who would it be? Kylie Jenner. Wow. Billions of dollars of stuff in there. <laughs> what are your favorite snacks? Uh, On the bus. Like fruit snacks. For fruit sure. snacks? Yeah. Fruit snacks. And overall? Overall, favorite snack? Like Oreos, probably. Cookie guy. Yeah. Some type of dessert. Which one of your pro goals was a favorite? Oh, shoot, my bad. <laughs> you already went over this. My bad. <laughs> Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? Yes. If you could steal someone's number on the team, who would it be? What would it be? Like their number? Jersey number. Tanner's phrase. 17. 17 was always at UGM. At UGM. Okay. My birthday. How much would you be willing to pay him to get his number? 200 bucks. 20 bucks? 200. 200 bucks? Yeah. Tanner? You need some extra money. You know where to come. Why can't we tickle ourselves? Brain. Your brain doesn't like you. It's probably the right answer. What TV uh, show are you currently watching? Peaky Blind does. Can you do your best uh, impersonation? I'm Billy Kimba, and I run the races. 
Probably going with a different one. <laughs> what? <laughs> what color is your toothbrush? Red. First thing you do in the morning. Open my eyes. Yeah, that's that's a given. <laughs> After that. Eat uh, multivitamins. What's the last thing you do before you go to bed? Uh, plug in my phone. <laughs> what celebrity annoys you the most? Ellen DeGeneres. Really? I used to love her, now I hate her. Why? <laughs> she just Parts of her shows where she rips innocent people is just not cool. Okay. It used to be funny, but now it's just gone too far. Yeah? Yeah. What is your biggest addiction? Golfing. Now yeah, it's golfing? Yeah. Losing balls on the golf course? Yeah. <laughs> you love that? To that. <laughs>